Welcome to the Fast Fix channel everyone. Today we are changing the rear wheel bearings on a 2008 Honda Civic. This will work for all 8th generation Honda Civics and probably some other models as well. And hey at the end, if this video helped you, please help me. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let's get right to work. We are on the back side of the brake rotor here. Simply remove the bolt that secures the hole clamp for the rubber brake line. This will allow you more movement when you remove the brake caliper. While you're back here, remove the bolt that secures the speed sensor. Then push in the tabs that hold the upper connection mount in place. Now remove the speed sensor. These can be hard to remove sometimes, and you'll see I made a mistake when trying to remove mine. If you're not able to get a screwdriver underneath, try moving the sensor back and forth, up and down, just so you can loosen it a little bit. As you can see here, we're starting to get some movement, but I got a little impatient with mine and applied too much pressure to the plastic tab and as a result, broke it. Just take your time with it if it's giving you resistance. Only apply pressure to the area that houses the speed sensor. If you apply too much pressure to the side where the bolt goes, you're likely to break it as I did. Luckily, this went back in just as hard as it came out. However, I will be replacing it soon. Now we need to remove the brake caliper. I sometimes use a rubber mallet to hit the ratchet in order to loosen these bolts because they can be stubborn. But once loose, you are likely able to remove them by hand the rest of the way. Now lift the caliper up and place behind the rotor assembly. I used a bungee cord to secure the caliper in order to prevent the weight of the caliper from applying pressure to the brake line and possibly damaging it. Now remove the brake pads and inspect them for wear. If worn, replace them, otherwise just place to the side. We are on the back side of the rotor assembly again, and this time removing the remaining caliper mounting bolts. Again, I'm using a rubber mallet to knock these loose. Now let's remove the rotor. You may need a tool like this in order to remove the screws securing the rotor. This is called an impract screwdriver. I picked this one up at Harbor Freight. It's useful because you can hit the end of it with a hammer and break loose an overtight or corroded screw. I'll link this in the description as well as the screws should you need to replace them. Now remove the rotor. It likely won't pull off and you'll need to give a few good whacks with a rubber mallet as I did. Hit lightly but forcefully around the rotor to loosen. As you can see here, I had to hit at the rotor from the back side to pop it loose. Removing a dust shield is optional, but a step I chose to do. You don't need to remove this piece, but I thought it would be beneficial for the viewer, so I went ahead and removed it. Only three bolts to get it loose. There are four bolts securing the wheel bearing assembly. Remove the four bolts shown here. It's likely that your wheel bearing assembly will drop out like mine did, so holding onto it is a good idea when removing the last bolt. There was a bit of oil and grind to clean, so inspect yours for the same. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the old and new wheel bearing assemblies. The old one has 260,000 miles on it and very much needed to be replaced. When installing the new wheel bearing, make sure to match up the proper sides. There's a flat edge and a curved edge. I show the flat edge here. Also, don't forget to install the shield at this point if you chose to remove it. Now install the four bolts that secure the wheel bearing assembly. Tighten those to 42 foot-pounds. When tightening the bolts for the shield, make sure you don't over torque them. The heads of the bolts can actually twist off rather easily. Now we're in the home stretch and simply need to reassemble following the disassembly steps in reverse. A quick note here, only hand tighten the screws securing the rotor. They don't need to be tight in any respect. This will help you should you need to replace the rotors in the future. Now reinstall the caliper mounting hardware. See that metal tab on the brake pad? Make sure that's installed on the low side of the caliper mount as seen here. Sometimes the brake pads go in a little tight. Just keep at it and don't be afraid to push these in using good pressure.
Now mount and install the brake caliper. It's a little tough to align the bolts sometimes, but you'll get it. Just be patient and apply pressure to different areas in order to manipulate the caliper in the direction you want it to go. Now install the brake line mount. Now install the speed sensor and the sensor mount. I'm driving the bolt in to keep it in place, and again, we'll replace it soon. A final step that's overlooked sometimes is to install your lug nuts at 88 foot-pounds in a star pattern. Once you've done this, you are good to go. And as you saw, this really wasn't that complicated of a process. Really, it's just about having the right part and the right tools. You should be able to get it done. So hey, if this video helped you, please help me. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day.